We're going to start tonight's show with a little video, an introduction to Watsu. This uh, video uh, was done by Harold, and uh, it's really beautiful. Settle in, let the healing and love just carry you for the next hour. It, it's, it has a potential for you and for us to be a beautiful experience. So whenever we're ready with the video. Watsu, or water shiatsu, is a pioneering and phenomenally growing form of aquatic bodywork that began in 1980 when Harold Dahl started applying the stretches of Zen Shiatsu while floating people in the warm pool at Northern California's Harbin Hot Springs. In the years since, with the help of students, other instructors, and professionals from related fields in countless classes, spas, and clinics around the world, Watsu has evolved into what many believe is the most significant advance in bodywork in our time. While virtually every other modality uses touch to connect the practitioner with a client, Watsu allows for a significantly deeper connection through the holding that working in water necessitates. The practitioner cradles the client in his or her arms and creates a physical and emotional environment of total safety and trust. With that trust as a framework, the closeness of the person-to-person -person contact combines with the deeply relaxing effects of warm water, the freedom it gives the spine, and the therapeutic nature of Watsu's moves and stretches. The result is a bodywork modality of extraordinary depth, which can have both specific therapeutic results and profound healing on many levels of a person's being, besides finding countless applications in therapy and in spas around the world Watsu is bringing new connection into the lives of many who are sharing its simpler moves with family and friends. In a typical session, harmonizing the receiver and giver's breathing with each stretch and the gentle rising and falling of the body in water leads into deeper and deeper levels of relaxation. Moments of stillness alternate with moves that free the body in ways impossible on land. The experienced Watsu practitioner chooses from a wide range of positions and proven sequences those that will be the most effective and appropriate. At the same time, he or she listens for and follows whatever tendencies to move arise from within the receiver, welcoming each opportunity to move into a creative free flow. Typically, at the end of a session, no matter how much might have been encountered and let go during the session, the receiver feels a deep, an extremely satisfying sense of completion. Hi, we're on the set with Harold. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having so me. So how did you come to develop Watsu? What, what was the path that led you into the world? Well, I was, I was teaching Zen Shiatsu. I'd studied this in Japan and in America. And in Zen Shiatsu, we do a lot of stretching. It focuses more on stretching than actual point work in Zen Shiatsu. And I was uh, teaching groups up at Harbin Hot Springs, and they have a warm pool there. And that's a resort area up in it's north northern of, California? Yeah, north of Calistogia, two hours north of San Francisco. Right. And I just started floating people to start stretching them in the warm water and found that they really stretched. The stretches were much more powerful when it's done in warm water because it really helps the person relax and like that. And, and you found that there was like an anti-gravity effect. I mean, just something about being in the water allowed movement to happen? Yes, and it takes the weight off the spine, so the spine is freed and can move different ways like that. Because, I mean, when we first met, which was, I guess, a couple of months ago now, you took me to a local pool around here, and yeah. it was just an extraordinary experience. Why don't you describe the, the process of the experience and how you cradle the person you know, in the in the hard area. I mean, I mean, yeah. I felt. I mean, you know, I'm not 12 years old anymore. Yeah. Or five, as <laughs> most of you have probably guessed by now. But I mean, you really feel like a baby. You really feel, yeah. you know, as you open into it. Why don't you describe? Well, that? The, what we when we start with a person, we want we want the water to be doing everything. We want them to feel that they're totally accepted in the water, and we connect to the breathing of the person to give that a feeling. So. We're holding them, and then as we feel them breathing out, their body starts getting heavier, and they start sinking. And then as they breathe in, they get lighter. And so we just connect our breathing to that. So when we feel them getting heavier, we also 
breathe out and we sink. And when we feel them getting lighter, we just breathe in and the water lifts us. So we're not putting any effort or any force. So we can just totally be present with the person. And this is the principle that comes from Zen Shiatsu, is the idea of being present, giving the person support, not trying to do something to them, but being with them, not that. So we can have this wonderful closeness of just being there and not trying to do something to the person. And this allows people to, to access all kinds of levels. And we don't try to focus at any one level. Whatever, whatever they are, they're accessing, whatever they're working through, we're just there with them. And the water is a very primal element, and people can move Yeah, I mean, we're made of, of like, what, 80, 90, yeah. 3 percent yeah. water? I yeah. mean, so, I mean, we really feel at home in water yeah. as human beings. So, and you, you felt that that was like the next step in terms of your understanding of, of a healing process and, and a, a stress reduction process? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's, uh, and I started teaching it to my students. Well, I, well, I, I have a school up at Harbin Hot Springs that we've had for 20 years there now. And I started teaching it to my students and found that when they came back on land to do work on land, there's something had changed. They were able to, to, to move differently, to be present, to be more present. And, and we also started teaching uh, drop-in classes for people that weren't professional body workers and found that not only in receiving but in giving, they were able to really experience something very valuable for them, of holding another in the water, just simply holding and letting, feeling the breathing with another, connecting with another like that. So we've, over the 20 years, we've had drop-in classes at Harbin Hot Springs every weekend. The people can just come in and experience that. And it's... And it's uh, they can experience both sides. I mean, you give also receiving. where people come in for sessions. treatments oh, or yeah, sessions so where they come in and they're... Yeah, yeah we have, we've been developing. It's been a long development over 20 years. A lot of all the program for practitioners, which we find is we need more and more it's becoming more and more professional, the program. We started with, you know, just at the beginning, and now we've, we've moved it a long way. And so we have very professional. But at the same time, we want to make it accessible to people that aren't on a professional path. So we have and that's one of the things you're working on now is expanding, is expanding in almost home bathtubs yes, and home yeah, pools. And yes. So it doesn't have to be with a trained instructor. It can be right. with a loved one or... Well, they, they sh it's good if they first learn from an right. instructor, but right. they don't, if they, it's, it's, because uh, there are things to, I mean, you need to really be careful about how you're holding a person's neck in the water, their head, not their neck, because people, people relax very much in the water, and so they need to be really well supported. And yeah, feel kind of, safe. And feel safe. Yeah, if they, like if they get dunked, it would be yeah, a yeah. less than pleasant experience. Yeah, no no nose is going under. <laughs> that's not so good. Yeah. Do you notice that when somebody, starts letting go and yeah. starts relaxing, that their, their weight changes, their body chemistry, their vibration. I mean, oh, can you yes. feel, you oh, can yes. feel yes. it. Definitely, yeah, you can feel it. And it's in stages, but some people it, it, it takes longer, but everybody lets go something. And so that's, you know, it's, we're not trying to make them totally all <laughs> limp, mm -hmm. wet noodles or anything like right. that. Because we, we just, but they just, whatever they let go, it's, it's uh, and, they, and they do, oh, everybody lets go something. And, did, yeah. did you find, because, you know, I had the experience, and, and yeah. you did it to me, yeah. uh, of, you know, just a real love. I mean, because oh, I you're cradled in the, in oh, the, the me, other person's is, yeah, heart. For me, this holding and having the arm back here, I've always felt a kind of heart wrap. I call it kind of a heart wrap. I connect into the breathing, and when I get really connected to the breathing, something happens. It's almost it's like just, you're one. Yeah. That's, I mean, the separation yeah. breaks down. Yeah. And no one. one's moving the other person, you know, yeah. no one's being moved. It's just, yeah. there is this movement, there is this water. And this, and this feeling of oneness, for me, has always been so incredible because it's, it's with everybody that's floating there in my arms, people that I would never imagine having, that, having a feeling of oneness with. But then, once they're there, but then when, when you have this too, you realize it's, it's, not, it's not your oneness with this person, right. it's your oneness with everything. Right. It's and a way of accessing, accessing that. The, that experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that you know, on the show and on the flyers we say dedicated to the oneness. Right. And that's what the show is about, you know, 97 <laughs> different you know, spokes sure. into how to experience sure. the oneness. Because it doesn't matter what spoke you're using, it's just better as if you're experiencing the oneness. You know? And one, one of the spokes I find happening in Watsu too is working with the breath is going to that point at the bottom of the breath. And I always feel very much an emptiness right at that point. And then 
rising up from that. And I, and I feel that oneness also resides in going to that emptiness and yeah, being in that I emptiness. Mean, and people have called it can, meditation in a sense. I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, it's a, in a sense that's a meditation technique of the experience of meditation. Sure. Or something like that. Sure. So you find yourself uh, having this experience, once you have it in the water, I mean, does that carry, do people, you would think, carry that experience it's out on land. Oh, oh, very <laughs> much. Yeah. People, many, many people have changed their lives profoundly after this work. It's been, and some not so much. It, it varies. Right. It totally varies. It's, the, the, it's you know we never know what's going to happen <laughs> with uh, any individual, but it's it's been. It and and fun. and the the facility now is going through a transformation where it's going to yes. be more available and more different. Why yes, well, there's a new center. This is at Harbin Hot Springs. Yeah, this is building, where you. They're building a new center, the Watsu Center, uh, for our work there. And it's an incredible center. It's going to be five geodesic spheres. It's designed by Eugene Sway, who's just an incredible architect, with two pools up on the side of the mountain there. And we should be in it later this summer. We're two forward. pools meaning the Watsu pools. Yeah, where you two can Watsu do the pools and then the five spheres around it on the side of the mountain. Now, how is it generally done? I mean, when you and I did, it was you and I in the pool alone. Yeah. And and in the videos that I've seen and that we saw a little earlier, there were you know numerous groups. Well, those are those are shots taken from classes. So the classes have numerous yeah. ones. But often, often at Harbin, there'll they'll be there'll be different people giving sessions in the same pool. Uh -huh. That's that's it's ideally if you it would be to have a, a single session pool that you have just totally to, to like yourself. a big hot tub. But it still but it still works. It works wherever. <laughs> Because people no, they because go you into, let go, right? Yeah, you're, people you're let right. go, and it they doesn't go into, matter. Yeah, and what? And it was about ten years ago. Well, right now there's a book out that's called uh, Aquatic Rehabilitation, which is standard textbook on working in water. And Watsu is one of the three major forms now that's recognized and used around the world in aquatic rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, about ten years ago, uh, the first experience with working with the clinic using Watsu was Timpani Center in San Jose. And they called me down there to teach. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen, because we were t using this more as body work, more as like mas massage, the shiatsu, and like that. And I hadn't, I hadn't really thought how it would be, would be used clinically. And uh, we took it down there and, and taught them. And they, were, they just did wonderful things w using it there clinically. And I was- Well, just, just describe the difference between clinic you know, clinically, what, what do you mean by okay, that? Well, like for okay. people who have more so let's, let's extreme say, let's look conditions? At, yeah, extreme conditions and also aquatic, th I mean, this is, Watsu is really the first form of aquatic body work as, is, as distinguished from aquatic therapy. There's always been aquatic therapy, but it's been f with special conditions, a particular condition. Whereas like massage, it's done, it can be done for stress reduction. You don't have to have a special condition to get a massage. It's, it's like, and the same way with Watsu, it can, be, it can be something just for personal growth and, and uh, stress reduction like that. So, and this had, wasn't true of aquatic therapy. Before, aquatic therapy was mainly for you have a special condition that focuses on that condition, mm -hmm. whereas this focuses on the whole person. Like that. Yeah, I was going to say anything that really focuses on the whole person that you would think would deal with any condition. Sure. Now, whether it's and what they found when they started doing it there at Timpani Center, they did some studies, and they compared it with the aquatic therapy techniques. For example, techniques that were designed to increase range of motion to make the to give the arm more movement. Uh, they measured how many treatments it take, how much success it would have, and then they did it with Watsu, and they found they were able to measure much more. Much more, and these uh, were both done in water. Yeah, both done in water. But the what the reason was because when a person is stood up in the water and having their arm rotated, all their attention is there, and they're resisting. Even if they're trying to Absolutely. help, that's resistance. Right. Whereas if you're floating them around the pool like this, and then you're just ro rotating their arm in the process, they don't attempt focus resistance there, and so they're able to increase the range of motion. Now, and how about on land? What other you know techniques? I mean, has there been tests that show that when you do these same processes more or less in water, that because it's in water, I mean, it would make sense to me oh, because yeah. of the... Yeah, there was this, this, uh, yeah, there's many conditions that just being in water helps, you know. And then also what we can do with when we have the weight off the spine, we can move the spine in ways that just can't be moved on land. 
Connect. You know, it was interesting because I remember saying to you after, it seemed like on some level you were, you know, we did it, I guess it was probably an hour session, give or take, you know, yeah. five or ten minutes either way, uh, that you might find yourself being tired after because, you know, you were doing a lot it. of the activity and you said no, no that you no, could do eight or not. ten or twelve. Yeah, oh yeah, no, no, it's not tiring at all because it's, it's a meditation. Yeah. And so after I mean, that was what was really interesting to yeah, me. Yeah, after that, meditation, it's, I feel very good. Yeah. So you can do like eight, nine, or, well, that might be a lot. Well, that would be quite a bit. You right. get kind of a little waterlogged after yeah, a while. I was going to say, you start, <laughs> they, they raise you, you out of the You water. start losing a few minerals, too. <laughs> to you start nine. passing out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to show that second video in a little while. We'll show the one uh, with the healing, the one in yeah. Israel. Why don't you, you know, yeah, describe this is, this was This is a, a, a clinic I was teaching in Phoenix, and we'll hear the person down there. And I just wanted to say one thing, when I taught at Timpani Center, one thing that really pleased me was they started a program there of training parents to Watsu infants that had handi problems, handicap problems. Like what kind? Or adopted infants, infants that had problems of bonding, bonding that weren't yeah. bonded. And they sent, me a, they sent me a video that showed this big guy, looked like a football player, with this tiny little infant doing all the Watson moves with it. And it was just it was so and nice that, to see And that, that was because it was an adopted child? or a, It was an adopted child, child, yeah. And so what types of disabilities seem to really respond? Well, we're going to hear in this next vi the video the dis description of some of them. That, uh, and, and the number is growing. It's not, it's not <laughs> totally... Right. Uh, it hasn't been fully explored yeah, yet. Explored. Yeah, I mean, it would seem to me that... W you know, it's just, it's a beautiful experience. So, I mean, yeah. it would, you know, bring the body more in harmony. So whatever is in disharmony, whether it can yeah. bring it all the way, you know, it can heal a broken leg, well, maybe not. But it also brings, it brings the person back into their uh, parasympathetic nervous system from the stress, and, I mean, just the re stress reduction. And all, yeah, all right, the they're more balanced at that yeah. point. And the floating level with the heart has, has really effect on... But that was what I, I said to you right after. I mean, that was what there was really the beautiful yeah. experience. So I guess whenever we're ready, uh, you know, why don't we see the second, the healing video, and then we'll be back and we'll talk some about it. This was done by Harold. My name is Lynette Jameson. I'm an occupational therapist in Phoenix at the Maryvale Samaritan Health Institute. We're currently seeing anywhere between 100 and 150 people a day. Um, the company I work for is quite large. We're uh, the largest healthcare provider in Arizona. I brought Harold Dole here to our facility for Watsu training one and two for our entire staff. We, Im we trained 30 rehab employees with the Watsu one and two techniques. Um, since that time, uh, our use of Watsu has gone up significantly. Currently, we're treating a variety of patients, patients with fibromyalgia, arthritis, um, patients that have had a stroke, um, chronic pain patients, people that have back injuries. In addition to those, we even work with some psychiatric diagnoses, uh, people that have gone through a rape, women particularly, uh, and we find that Watsu helps bring them to terms with their current diagnosis and helps them get through some very difficult times. Um, from a pain management perspective, we find that the Watsu can relieve pain. Um, initially, when we first introduce Watsu, those that have chronic pain uh, feel relief for about 24 hours after the first Watsus. Um, after two or three weeks of having a regular Watsu, uh, we find that the, the benefits from Watsu are, are longer lasting. Can last as long as a week for pain management and more. Um, for those that have range of motion problems, we use the Watsu to increase joint uh, mobility and joint integrity. Um, in addition to that, we're using Watsu with those that have psychiatric problems. We find that just by the nature of Watsu that we're being uh, nurturing and caring and there's something about just the way we hold someone during a Watsu, and we get lots of benefit from it. My name is Tovia Stuchiner, and I'm the director of the Williams Island Aquatic 
Therapy Center Israel. We give more than 2,000 aquatic therapy sessions per month. We specialize in pediatrics. I find Watsu to be a very strong therapeutic tool. The combination of vestibular sim stimulation, rotations, and freeing the spine are very effective in reducing muscle tone and increasing range of movement in cerebral palsy children. Other children with developmental disabilities benefit from the close, tender, caring holding, which is so important for every child. Hi, we're back with Harold. So, okay. Yeah, those videos are beautiful. So yeah, that, you find that spreading now, that more and sure. more... Very much so. And the pool we just saw was a pool in Israel, which I was teaching at. It was very, I was a very n nice group of people there. They're working with a lot of children now. It's the biggest... Uh, how, the, how the work has gone into different countries is very interesting. It depends on the people that first get contact with it, what, what field they're in. Like he was had this huge center that works with children in Israel, and he's also a professor at the university there in aquatic therapy, and he started loving Watsu and bringing it in and working with all the children. How and do so people was, come in contact with it? Well, I mean, there was another, it, it's, it's, so, it's so various. When I was in southern France, I was giving uh, a lecture in Monaco at a meeting of uh, midwives that work in water, and there was the head of the uh, Italian Childbirth, uh, Natural Childbirth Association, uh, a doctor. And he invited me to Italy, and I started teaching midwives there. Now there's, uh, we have many practitioners and students in Italy, and they're not all midwives, but it started out, it was mainly the midwives that brought it in. And they've been doing a lot of really interesting work with pregnant women, with Watsu, and also having the, the husbands come in, and Watsu, the mother, while she's pregnant, and that bonding with the child that they feel with, with, by watsuing the other. Wow. And also coming in and watsuing the mothers r after the birth, when other intimacy is not f appropriate, and they, but they can get that connection through the... Through mm. the uh, that. And uh, another uh, very different group to bring me in was the group in Japan. Uh, Jun Kono was the head coach of the Olympic swim team of Japan when they were supposed to go to Moscow. And the, because of the boycott, and his, his uh, students were so disappointed, or his team members were so disappointed, he quit the Olympic Association. And he started traveling around the world to, bring, to look up different kinds of aquatic exercise, comparing it in Europe and America to introduce it into Japan. And in one of the places where he was watching aquatic exercise, someone was demonstrating Watsu. And so he, he asked for one of our teachers to come to Japan and, and show it. And then he came and studied with me at Harbin Hot Springs and then later in Hawaii. And now he's teaching the Watsu in Japan. And the cover of the book is one of the classes where I was teaching in Japan, which uh, uh, almost everybody in that picture is aquatic exercise instructors in Japan. And now they're becoming Watsuers. And they've also started bringing it into their aquatic exercise sessions as a warm down at the end of a more active session and having people pick up each other and float them to, to finish their, their sessions. I mean, it seems like a beautiful thing even just in terms of teamwork and to feel yeah. like, you know, that we're all one team here. Sure, we're all sure. working together. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. actually, do you find that, I mean, in some Olympic sports and athletes there's a, a, a situation or a problem with steroids and things like yeah. that? Did you notice that a lot there, and, and would Watsu deal with that, or make? I mean, how, would that would there be any connection? Or is that like the I I don't quite get it. <laughs> no, in other words, like, do a lot of these Olympic athletes take steroids, and would that affect how they would respond to Watsu? I just don't know. I haven't come up with the you know, experience, never, and I haven't. Yeah, I mean, because there is a, you know a lot of theory that a lot of the athletes, you know, are on steroids of one kind or another yeah. to, you know, increase their peak yeah. performance and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, it's possible that when they start doing Watsu, they stop doing that because they feel the it's disharmony possible. of it. Yeah. But you've never seen No, it. I haven't worked with you. And yet. also, one of the other things that's happening is that Watsu is being offered in uh, a lot of spas all over the world now, right? I mean, as you would offer a weight room or whatever. Yeah, it's becoming very... Uh, we just recently taught... Uh, uh, of the almost the whole staff at uh, Sonoma Mission Inn, where they're, they're building, a, they built a new whole new center around the Watsu Pool, which uh, they do a lot of sessions in. The first spa to bring Watsu in was Ten Thousand Waves in uh, Santa Fe, 
And this was about about 12 years ago, I think it started there. And then Two Bunch Palms, which is not far from LA. It's yeah. in Desert Hot Springs. Uh, and they've been doing a lot there. Um, the work at, uh, it's very interesting, the work at Two Bunch Palms, they've been doing, uh, they've introduced a program also where they offer Watsu to couples. And they'll take two practitioners, they'll go into a pool with a couple, and they'll float them around separately, and then they kind of bring them together, and then they also show the couple how to float each other, so that they can experience giving it as well as, as receiving it, which I think which I think is very important to, uh, for and, people and to how, experience. And the movement towards being able to do it in more like your own facility, and more, you know, you yeah. have a bathtub, I mean, how, is that a possibility too, or is that just too small? Well, we're, we're, I've developed a a adaptation of Watsu, which will work in a spa, a small spa. A spa. Yeah. But you haven't okay. gotten into a bathtub yet. So no, not too into small. a bathtub. So the spa small. we're calling Watsu CQ or Watsu Close Quarters because it's kind of closer <laughs> right. quarters. Right. right. And uh, it's very interesting because you don't have room to float the person around, right. but you have the the giver has the support of sitting on a bench and can do really strong stretches and can do strong strong body work. And so it's a kind of a mixture between the body work you can do on land and what you can do in the water. Mm-hmm. So, and that would just allow it to be in more places that don't yeah, have... Yeah, for more pe- people to uh, have... People their, to have yeah, that and opportunity. we'll be training pe- practitioners and instructors to go out and show people how to, to do this in their own spas. And, and are their training centers all over the world, or does everybody come to your center? Or is it branched well, no, it's out? it's branching out. There are, there are centers all over. And, and is there a, uh, a system of uh, authorization or, uh, you know, you well, have to get a pass I, through a class or is there anything of, um, before you can go out and do it? Or? Oh, yeah, we have a whole program and we, and we uh, uh, maybe we should look at the, the, the clip on the spas now because yeah, at will. the end of this, uh, it talks a little about yeah, that? Yeah, you can see okay, that. You can see that. Besides Watts' value as therapy for the growing number of conditions clinics use it for around the world, more and more spas find their clientele drawn both to its power to reduce stress and its potential for personal growth. Watts can affect every level of our being. It can help release trauma that has been stored in the body for years. It is rebonding therapy and can help heal deep wounds of separation. Being floated heart level and breath connected can help the heart recover emotions the brain is obsessing on or repressing and let them go into the flow. In the emptiness we sink into together at the bottom of the breath is our oneness. And in the stillness that follows movement, the stillness that moves. Because more levels than can be kept track of can be accessed during a watsu, the watsuer is trained to just be with the person in his or her arms, to not try to do anything to them, to not try to rebirth or mother or process them, to not interrupt a session to ask what tears in someone's eyes might mean, whether they are the sorrow at not being held this way before, or joy, or both. They too are just water flowing into the emptiness. Learning to be with another this way becomes a practice, a meditation, that can benefit anyone who follows us into the water and picks up someone in their arms. For this reason, besides developing trainings that prepare practitioners for whatever they might find in a professional practice, we have developed a basic watsu that anyone can learn in a weekend and practice over and over with family and friends without exhausting its potential. Its focus is on grounding in water, connecting breath, and letting the water do everything. This can be followed by up to three additional and equally complete stages that each incorporate and expand what was taught before. The transition flow, the rest of Watsu One, expands with graceful transitions, the basic flow. 
In Watsu 2, the expanded flow integrates more detailed bodywork and stretches. In Watsu 3, the culmination of their program, students learn to share the power of their creativity in free flow. These courses, which have evolved over the last 20 years with the help of instructors and students in countless classes, are taught around the world by instructors registered with the Worldwide Aquatic Bodywork Association. This nonprofit, WABA, owns and operates the school at Harbin Hot Springs, where aquatic bodywork was born, develops books and videos for this newest healing art, and posts and maintains the registry of our worldwide water family. To find practitioners, instructors, classes, and more about the forms of aquatic bodywork, visit our site, waba.edu. Our goal is a world in which everybody holds and floats each other in their arms. Hi. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, why don't you explain, like, how somebody who, who wanted, who was interested, you know, the millions of people who are watching the show tonight right, who are interested, right. sure. you know, how, how would they start out the process? Well, uh, the, we are training teachers to offer a week, weekend workshops that are very basic. I mean, how many centers would you say there are in the United States? Well, there's, we have, uh, there's not so many centers as there are teachers that are going around to different places that are uh, right here in Southern California. In, in, uh, there's about three places within this area where classes have been held. One just up, up from uh, Santa Barbara and uh, where was the, where I gave you the session at? Yeah, that was right in Santa Barbara at the Lorianne David Sacred Spaces. Yeah. yeah, she's been a guest on the show doing yeah. drumming. And then uh, Serena Hausman has a pool up in Ojai, and she's been working with the Oaks and the, uh, what's the other spa there, the Living... Yeah, I know which one, the Ojai Valley Inn. The Ojai country. Valley Inn, she's been doing Watsu in those right. places, and she has her own pool, and there has been some classes there. Right. And then at the Easter Seal Pool in Ventura, uh, one of our instructors there has been working with uh, uh, handicapped people and patients Can it be in a regular pool or does it there. have to be a specially designed situation? It doesn't have to be specially designed, but it has to be warm. That's the, that's that's the, the key. And uh, the ideal temperature is body temperature, about 94 to 96 So do some degrees. of these facilities, you know, have a regular pool and then heat it up for for the Watsu training programs? That, that's happened. That that I, I, was just, I was just at the University of North Carolina in Greensboro, and they had a huge pool, and they heated that huge pool. They, they brought me in in a week when uh, the school was on vacation, the university was on vacation, and they heated this huge pool up to, up to 94 degrees, and we had the glass in there, but normally the pool was at swimming temperature and, and like that. So in other words, anywhere there's a pool where they're willing to heat it to that right. temperature is a, an, an available Watsu pool. As long as the depth doesn't sink people, as long as yeah, you can right. stand on the bottom. Right. And the ideal depth is one in which you can get down in the water with your legs. If you're, if you're in water that's too deep and you have to stand on your tiptoes, then you just kind yeah, of wobble around. Yeah. But you need water that you can really get braced on and, and then sink into it and experience that emptying. In the breath with mm -hmm. it. That's important. So, and, and you, you feel like what you're doing now is to travel the world, like lighting the flames all over, bringing, you know, the, the experience of it to as many people as possible, sure, wherever sure, sure. you're sure. called upon yeah, to do it. Yeah, And we formed uh, the Worldwide Aquatic Bodywork Association. It's a nonprofit, uh, the same kind you, your foundation just mm -hmm. formed, an educational a nonprofit, right. and we maintain a registry. And the registry is, the, we keep the records of everybody who studied Watsu, and also a couple other forms that are related to it, Chihara technique, which is a form of Watsu, and uh, water dance, which is another form in which people are taken underwater. See, in Watsu we don't take people underwater. We work on the surface, and the going underwater is another level. <laughs> And it's another challenge, a different level of challenge to have to let someone else take you underwater. Oh, and do another breathing. level of trust. Another level of trust. And so we have it as part of our program, and people are learning that as well, and it's, it can be another step. So that's what the Worldwide Aquatic Bodywork Association includes all of this. And uh, 
we are the registry we posted on the our website which can be accessed through WABA, which is the Worldwide Aquatic Body Work Association, dot edu, because it's educational, mm -hmm. or just watsu.com. You can mm -hmm. get to it that way. And we, uh, instructors post their classes, so people can go there and they can find out where there are classes, any place, and see what the description of the instructor and everything like that. And they can find practitioners. They can look by state or region and find practitioners through the, through the website. Mm -hmm. And these people have to be registered. In order to be a, a licensed practitioner, you have yeah. to have gone through the training, you have to be registered in the program. Right, right, yeah. In order to be listed there, you have to be on the registered and gone through the training. And The training has... Has, has there been another lineage form where there's, you know, there's a competing lineage in Watsu yet, or you well, avoided that so far? Well, we've, there have been other forms that have kind of come up afterwards sort of incorporated something from Watsu and something from the water dance. The water dance itself was first developed in Switzerland by... And why don't you describe that? I'm Arjana, sure. Arjana and uh, Amon. Uh, and they, uh, they were first developing it just as experiential uh, to accompany workshops. To, to, to take it. When they had a workshop group, they would have people learning to go under the water. And that. then they started developing it. Arjana uh, then came and studied Watsu with me, and she now is teaching Watsu, and she teaches the water dance. And, they've and we have and some of our teachers in this country are teaching the water dance, too, and it's developed in and, quite and, a... And you find course. them to be complementary and just an expansion? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, it's another, it's another level. But for people, the first time they go into the pool, it's best that they... They first Gain develop a little the trust, trust, you know, <laughs> before you because, whack them underwater. Because it is a challenge. Right. It is a challenge when you give over your breathing to someone else. It's, it, you can, it can bring up issues and like that and like that. And we also, speaking of bringing up issues, we, we really need to tr we train our instructors too in how to deal with what, whatever might come up during a session. And how would you do access. that? Why don't you describe? Well, that? well, one thing is is. Uh, to just know what your own limitations are, and what, that you're not a psychologist. You can't really fix people. You, can, you can't. But you can be there and, and help them. And, then that's, that's and, and do you mean that like even verbally, if people, or, or are you talking movement-wise? How, how would you describe that? Well, the, the session is usually done in silence throughout. The person's ears are in the water as much as possible, and they can't hear if you try to talk to them. And uh, but if they, if, they, if they come up against something that's emotionally, something is coming up from the past for them or something, and often the most common thing that happens is they just may have some tears come to their eyes. And as they go through the session, that goes away. And what they're kind of learning in the session is that they can let those things come up. And, the, and, and they let keep them and let them go. So that's so we really encourage our, our practitioners not to interrupt a session to find try to find out what's happening inside someone else. Unless it's really extreme. Unless it's extreme. Unless yeah. they want to stop the session, they can't take any more. Right. Of course, Get me out of yeah. this water. <laughs> How, that doesn't happen that often. No. Occasionally, we have people <laughs> that have a tendency towards seasickness, and we try to always determine that before we start and keep the movement down really slow, and so there's nothing. Oh, great. Don't have any problem with that. Oh, Jesus. But, uh, I'm sure that's happened every time. <laughs> but the thing that one of the things that people often are feeling when they have those tears in their eyes is just sadness uh, that they've never that this has been something they've been wanting for so long. Just to, to be feel held that, love, that way, right, just yeah. to be held that way with right. no intention, just to be held right. that way. And so, and they can feel that sadness. And it's good for them to access that sadness, and they can let go of it and know that they can be held that way. Right. So that's to a feel very the common. Of it, yeah. So that's a very com very common that happens that way. So, um, and also, of course, people, all, you know, the, all kinds of things can happen during a session, and we just leave you just, with them. Yeah, you just hold, hold the space for them. That. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we talked about earlier, I mean, you're just holding it in a really yeah. safe, and in our trainings, place. in our trainings too, it's very important to teach how to have a really clear separation at the end, because people can become attached if they if they confuse that oneness they're feeling with you with you then right. it could <laughs> be a real big yeah so we, separation so it's really, and really anxiety Im really important for people to just to, that you really that you're there but you're but that that's their their space their process that's what they're they're
No, I really yeah. can see that. I mean, after doing it, you just, <laughs> it's like, well, can you do this again tomorrow, <laughs> you know? Or you yeah. can you do this again in about 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. 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 Because if people have an experience in another way, like you say, it's, wow, this really yeah. feels good. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, there is, I'm sure you, I'm not the first one who thought of it, the whole womb experience. I mean, yeah. the water and, yeah. you know, being rocked in the water. I mean, Yeah, there's, there have been people that have experienced that very strongly. and. The rebirthing, and uh, and but we don't focus on that. We right. don't we don't push them in any area. No, you're we, neutral. Just, just totally what they can right. go through. Any any any. And yeah, they, they can they go, go anywhere. All They're just safe to go anywhere. Yeah. But I feel the heart connection really is the key to the work. Yeah. It comes back to that, and what I've read about the research that they've been doing on the heart mind in terms of it having its own mind, and having its own rhythms that when the person gets into their heart, the rest of their the brain and the rest of their body starts to, harmonize. starts to harmonize with the rhythms that are in the heart. And I feel that that's what really is happening in mm -hmm. water, that people can access their heart rhythms and feel, feel their body harmonizing with it that way. And, and, and in that state, the heart is able to let go or to manage emotions that the, the brain is, has held on to and is totally incompetent in managing, because the brain only knows how to obsess or repress, right. <laughs> whereas the heart can, can open and yeah, go of it, so like that. So this, this I, I feel, is happening a lot in the water. I think this is... Uh, so, and of course, because they're on the level of the heart, that's why we don't want to interrupt with words, because that pulls them back up here. And if they have some experience from the past that they're able to let go of in that state, if someone stops and says, well, what are you experiencing? Or even at the end of the sessions, tell me, what did you experience? You know, yeah, like, you're defining... So then they, right. have to, then they if they have to bring it back up into the brain, it could be counterproductive. It could be yeah, I think, you know, once you let go and once everything else settles in, I mean, what you experience is yeah. your heart, love, truth, yeah. God, however. Yeah. And that's all the you know, the tools and techniques and methods throughout history yeah. are to, like, let go. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you finally let go, there's only one thing that exists. <laughs> you know, and it feels like love in a human being. Sure. Whether you're in sure. water, with, you know, or in a mountain. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just beautiful that, you know, from just watching, you know, from doing it with you and to yeah. see that that really can do that to a person. Really, yeah. you can feel that love and the way the, the technique and the heart and the sure. movement and the water. Yeah, I'm still in awe of it. Still, you know, I mean, how's this <laughs> that this is happening like this? It just does amazes me. Well, the whole experiment's a miracle. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, which yeah. part of it do you pick out and say that this is even more? Yeah. So, do you see it really expanding? I mean, you're, you're oh, really yeah. excited. It's, and it's, once it's, these new centers, gonna oh be yeah, it's there. it's a, it's on a growth. It's geometric or <laughs> logarithmic, whatever that term. You know, just it's growing at a, a very fast pace now. Many spas, many more spas are, are picking up on it, and uh, clinics, it's just every... It's Do you, I mean, it seems like in a lot of, you know, in, in America in particular, there seems to be a, a situation where, you know, thing, there's like a trend for a while, the yeah. Watsu trend, yeah. you know, you support the Indians and you go to, the, you know, you just go yeah. through, you, you don't see that happening in, in I, your ex No, I think it's, a, no, I don't... I mean, I don't feel it's. it's uh, I mean, I may be wrong, but it just it doesn't mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like it's something I mean, you've that been everybody. For a long a, time. Yeah, it isn't yeah. something that everybody's going to drop all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they build a pool in their yard and they've got a <laughs> warm pool, <laughs> they're not going to stop wanting to go into well, it. I don't know. A lot but, of people but my ideal, in my, in my ideal is is a world in which like every block has a warm pool on it, and then people can just meet in the warm pool and float each other. Mm -hmm. it, it's a, it's a, it's much better than bars and yeah, <laughs> as a place for, much for gathering, bars. gathering, uh, community gatherings. So, and that, that day will come when heating the pool is, does not cost anything in energy. When there's some point at which there's a way of heating it that's not harming the planet at all, then then, right. then that can. I mean, so so in at Harbin, uh, is it mostly like uh, solar heated? There? No, well, the Harbin Harbin is uh, is a hot springs. So it's, so heated it's naturally, naturally heated. The new center, though, uh, will be solar heated because it's 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 off in a more isolated part, secluded part on the side of the mountain because we wanted more. And, and also, there's a limited amount of hot water, and it's used by a lot of people. That's coming from the hot springs. So, so one of the 
the points now is to heat something to keep it that warm in, in you know, the most American climates would take some amount of usage of electricity. Well, and yeah, all. or solar or, you know, what. You know. Right. So, I mean, really the thing that we'd want to do is have, like, like you say, centralized locations where it's, sure. you know, a common unity, a right, common, right. A common yeah. pool. Yeah. And do you find that in, in, in planned communities now, which there are a lot of, that, that, that is that taking to be part of like the initial plan? Is that coming to we've, that yet? We've had some people contacting us. That I don't know of any place that's already constructed with like a round of a Watsu pool. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not, I, I, I don't know of any, any uh, uh, but there have been some feelers, some architects of kind, you know, but uh, asked questions about that, doing that. Um, yeah. So, was your was your history involved in spiritual things? I mean, when you for you to come into this, well, my my background, I was a poet, and I was involved in San Francisco in 1957. I first went down there. Uh, when I graduated from the University of Washington, I had studied with Theodore Retke and Stanley Kunitz at Washington. And all the poets at that time were going to San Francisco. Was and so you drawn. were there with Ferl and Getty and the yeah. City Lights bookstore yeah. and, and hanging around there. Carol Doda. If I might. Well, I was not hanging around Carol Doda, <laughs> please. But Ferl and Getty. But, but they were all real close together, right? Wasn't yeah, that it was area? always in that the area. The North line Beach, line yeah. North, North Beach, Beach right. yeah. This was before the hippies came to town. Right. I came you know, later. <laughs> and then, and then I, I traveled to Europe, and I came back, and then I went and was teaching in Mexico City, and that's when the hippies came to San Francisco when I was in Mexico City. But the the days, in the, back in those early days, was a very exciting time. It was like the the poetry scene was very vibrant, very exciting. But then, as I started uh, traveling, I was teaching English other places in uh, Canada and Mexico, and I got kind of away from the scene and was not writing so much. And uh, was I, when I was 40 years old, I had never received a massage. I never had any body work. And then I got into shiatsu and zen shiatsu and loved it, loved the work with the... And you got that in the United States, but you studied in, in, in yeah, and then Japan. Yeah, and then I went and studied with uh, Shizuto Masanaga, who developed zen shiatsu right. there. And then I started teaching it. At, uh, but I was late coming into it. Yeah. So you didn't really come into all this stuff did you come in during the 60s, or you came in after that? To, to you know, like San the spiritual Francisco. path and all that? Well, my path before that time was the creative. Was the the art. creative. Art, for me, was my religion. Right. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was my right. practice, my meditation. Uh, uh, was, was the excitement of writing. And I, and I, loved, I loved paintings, I loved museums. I, loved, it's, it's a lot of, I was very much into aesthetics and that up until that time. When did you, would you say, you had your first like, transcendental experience where... It was it was it was around around writing and also I had had uh, different moments really strong vision <laughs> narrative experiences and it was never never drug induced I never got involved in drugs I was, was well you were the, like the only one yeah, I was the only one yeah like, I was the I don't time know if he's bohemian. telling the truth but if he's telling the truth no, he's the only the, one we're gonna we're gonna have to do it. <laughs> A search on this one. Yeah, no. no. Now you need to tell me you never smoked marijuana. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> not on say. television because there'll be a lot of people calling in. I was in a room with that man. No, but it's not. It, it was, it was never a big thing. It was never something right. I was I was interested in. Uh -huh. Not not not. not uh, because I I mean we have people I, on the show and you know people yeah. in my own experience, not myself of course, because I'm, 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 I was always a choir boy, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where you know drugs were an opening thing like LSD yeah, and I know, marijuana I know. were really But for me for me like I say the, my experience was more based around poetry it was more around the, the and but then yeah it's amazing you know we, I mean like I said we've had 97 shows and like 200 guests and you know all the different ways people came into the the yeah. experience of oneness and then all the different tools and methods that came out of their experience of right. that. it's just but, it's really beautiful but for having but the poetry life had become more of an isolated kind of right. lonely life, and then when I started doing the shiatsu, and in the head a lot, and in the head a lot. Then yeah. when I started doing the shiatsu and started doing the watsu, then I started feeling my connection to others right, again. Exactly. So they have kind of been yeah, lost. So yeah, yeah, you had really to open, open out. Yeah, and that really was the right. Well, I guess we're 
we've come to the end again. And it's great. really been really beautiful, and I hope you had the experience and the the opening that we had here. And you know, again, I wanted to you know I want to thank you all for all your letters, cards, emails, all the inspiration that you give us to just keep coming back and just exploring new avenues and all the love and all the people who share that love with us. And if you want any information about Harold, he told you the websites, but you could get call me at Alan 805-687-2053. You could do the Bridging Heaven and Earth website, heaventoearth.com. It'll be linked to, to Harold's website in the next couple of weeks. So thanks again for coming. Good night. God bless you. Remember the love. Good night.